Thank you for joining us for this educational session. On behalf of Comatec, I would like to welcome you to this presentation titled Optimizing Wound Care Processes to Improve Clinical and Financial Outcomes. I have the privilege to introduce our speaker today, Julia Ryan. She's a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania School of Nursing, as well as the University Law School, and is Associate Director of Clinical Market Development for Comatec. Julia has a diverse healthcare background with 35 years of experience covering a broad spectrum of healthcare environments that include hospitals, home health, assisted living, and long-term care. In her current position, Julia provides clinical and strategic support for the company's portfolio of advanced wound care dressings and solutions, including Combatech Complete. She works with wound care clinicians across the healthcare continuum in implementing efficiency in wound care processes, focusing on product formulary and clinical protocol standardization. Julia also represents Convitec on the Corporate Advisory Council of the National Pressure Injury Advisory Panel. So thank you again for joining us for this program. Please submit your questions in the Q&A section, and we'll look at them at the end of the presentation. With that, I'll pass it to Julia. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I hope that you had an opportunity to see the opening session this morning with Jill Emethin, uh, who talked about uh, implementing Comatech Complete at the Bethesda Health Group uh, facilities. And we'll be reviewing the Comatech Complete program itself in a bit more detail here today. Uh, this is my disclosure, of course, I'm a Comatech associate. So, We'll be talking about the why and how of optimizing the processes in which wound care is delivered and reviewing each of the components of the Comitec Complete program in depth, which is really the what uh, in optimization. So we'll start with the why and how. As wound care clinicians, we have a multitude of options in multiple categories uh, in wound care dressings, but we know that among all of these choices, we have less expensive, more expensive, higher quality, lower quality options. And it can sometimes be challenging to navigate all of these choices, as well as to convince executives uh, of the importance of investing in higher quality products, even though they might be a bit more expensive. Uh, to get to better wound outcomes. And it's important to understand the distinction between using less expensive products, which need more frequent dressing changes versus uh, higher cost products, which are higher quality and can have longer wear times, but also can have technologies incorporated within them that really uh, work to help wounds progress. Using dressings that require fewer dressing changes can provide greater cost efficiencies and an overall lower treatment cost than less expensive, lower quality products. And so when we analyze our dressing choices, we need to look at the total cost of the wound care episode as a key factor in determining the cost effectiveness of particular wound care dressings. We also know that our reimbursement models are moving away from fee-for-service to these more innovative types of models that focus really on patient-centered care. These changes have been most pronounced, particularly in wound care, in the post-acute areas of home health and skilled nursing. In home health, we have the patient-driven grouping model, and in skilled nursing, we have the patient-driven patient, -driven patient uh, payment model. And so, both of these have really changed how patients in these settings, uh, the care for these patients is going to be reimbursed. And both provide an enhanced opportunity in caring for wound care patients whose uh, care can really get very complex and very expensive uh, when you have limited funds uh, to take care of them. We're also seeing an increase in managed Medicare and Medicaid patients. In 2022, according to reporting by the Kaiser Family Foundation, we saw that the share of Medicare beneficiaries enrolled in Medicare Advantage rose to 48%, that's almost half. And we know that uh, it's projected to rise up to 61% in the next 10 years or so. These managed care models really force us to be uh, very cost conscious and to provide clinically effective wound care uh, 
for patients that are covered in these programs. We also hear a great deal about value-based purchasing models, which link healthcare provider payments to improve performance and hold providers accountable for both the cost and the quality of the care that they provide. And these models attempt to reduce what's considered inappropriate care or overuse of services and identify and reward the best performing providers, which is measured in terms of quality measures that are achieved by the provider. So when optimizing processes in healthcare, we turn to Lean Six Sigma principles, which are derived really from two separate systems. Uh, we talk about lean processes where we look to minimize or eliminate waste in every process, procedure, tasks, through you know, an ongoing system of quality improvement. And then we also include Six Sigma, which is really metrics driven. It's used to reduce variation, remove uh, defects from the processes that are involved in delivering care. And so in using these two philosophies together, we strive to optimize our healthcare operations and increase the value of what we're providing for patients. So in implementing Lean Six Sigma into a wound management program, we start with a project charter, which is really our roadmap. It involves setting out the problem we're looking to solve. And in this case, obviously it would be uh, likely perhaps wounds that aren't healing and wounds that are uh, very expensive to heal. What's the business case for the solution that we're looking to do? Well, we want patients to progress and to heal wounds and we want our costs to be in line with that goal. We look at overall what the goals are to achieve in this um, project and what's our timeline. If we don't set out time milestones in order to keep the project moving forward, it probably will stall because other priorities will come up. We look at what is the scope of our wound management program. Are we going to take all types of wounds or are we going to limit uh, the types of wound patients that uh, we can care for? And really probably most importantly here is who do we need on the team to drive the success of this process improvement program? That's really key. You have to have stakeholders from across the organization uh, to be engaged in this project. So for wound care, Lean Six Sigma looks like this. We, we integrate the define, measure, analyze, improve, and control mechanisms to the wound care products and the processes that we uh, are going to put in place to ensure that we're able to build the metrics and align on what we're going to measure uh, going forward so that we can continue to evaluate the process improvements that we've made. When we bring in the 5S that comes out of um, Six Sigma, uh, we also look to uh, ensure that we have the right product portfolio. So we have our clinicians who have the, the right products that they can choose to uh, provide advanced wound care for the patients. We want to improve the consistency in how that wound care is delivered and decrease that variance uh, in, in clinician practice. Uh, if, if it's a Monday or if it's a Saturday, the wound care that that patient receives should be the same with the same products, even though the clinician may be different. And then we want to empower the staff because that's really where the proof in the pudding comes. If you have staff engaged in this program, uh, they will uh, you know, be very supportive and they will continue to uh, move the project forward. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have education and support that is available when it's needed on demand. So Comitec Complete provides the tools that are necessary to incorporate all of these Lean Six Sigma quality improvement processes into your wound care program. So here are the five components of the Comitec Complete uh, program. We have wound product standardization, and that provides a consistency in clinical and financial outcomes when you have um, the same product portfolio that's being used by everyone. 
product acquisition. So that's where uh, we can understand which wound care product categories we're using, what do we need to have, and how often are we using products in these various categories. And so we regularly review this reporting that we get from distributors and suppliers. Wound care product portfolio management. We work with everyone, all of the stakeholders that are involved in managing the wound care patient, whether it's the provider, the clinicians, the distributors, if we have third party payers involved, everyone needs to be on board with this portfolio and providing these products to patients across the continuum of care. And education is really a key component of the program. It's very important to have a range of accessible uh, on-demand educational tools and resources. And that includes digital training, uh, wound hygiene protocol training, whether it's live virtual, or as well as an online web portal for access to wound related clinical content. And then last, but certainly not least, is how are we going to manage the wounds uh, and use a consistent clinical pathway to drive that consistency in wound care? So we'll look at each of these uh, in a bit uh, greater depth. So the product standardization component is really the foundation upon which the program is built. We know in wound care uh, that we have products that are divided into multiple categories, but having multiple products on the shelf in each of these categories can be overwhelming and, and a bit confusing. And so that's why it's important to partner with whoever is providing your wound care products to work with you to weed out um, the types of products that perhaps you don't need to have and to develop that standard formulary. We know that quality wound care outcomes are driven by using advanced wound care products that promote effective wound healing. So we're really looking not to necessarily just manage the wound, but to heal it. And then standardization provides a simplification of product selection. And uh, many of us here on the call are wound care experts, but we have many non-wound care experts who are taking care of these patients. And so standardization um, provides a simplification for those clinicians in particular to ensure that they're using the appropriate and the effective product uh, for the particular types of wound and that we're keeping our costs uh, in control as well as we're doing that. So in the acquisition component, we focus on collaborating with our distributor from whom we're getting the products to develop that more refined formulary management uh, and collaborating with partners who have a lean Six Sigma mindset. They, they have a quality improvement type of mindset and will work with us uh, on those principles in you know, acquiring product and providing uh, uh, us with reporting and analyzing our utilization. And we want to make sure that we have the products we need on the shelf, but not too much. And so there's uh, optimization of this component leads to having the appropriate product inventory and availability uh, on, uh, on the shelf. We can also look at, you know, where are we um, being very efficient and where maybe are we seeing some creep uh, and, and into more expensive products that aren't included in the formulary uh, and so need to be kind of reined back. And we look at utilization patterns and, and what are the, the discrepancies in uh, complying with the formulary. Very easy to do that with this type of reporting that distributors can provide. So we saw this morning um, from uh, Bethesda how they worked with the Lean Six Sigma distributor partner to really simplify how they were storing product uh, in their units. Very easy to understand anybody coming in, um, whether they were you know, a weekend staff or perhaps someone from an agency, they could really see how um, the products were laid out uh, in a way that they would be used. And this is, again, from this morning, just the, an image of the supply closet that is very organized and very similar to how things look uh, on the units themselves. So 
Talking about um, this, this third component, portfolio management. So this is where collaboration with all of the stakeholders involved in managing the wound care patients happens. And all really need to work together uh, to drive the formulary, to drive education and, and the goals of the program. And the more consistency that's driven in how the wounds are managed, the better the care and cost impacts will be. I would say um, with experience that this, this is probably one of the most difficult uh, areas of the program because it involves collaboration across settings. Um, if you have a patient who is um, seen in the hospital, they are transferred to um, the nursing home and with a wound. And so uh, the, the nursing home has this Comitech Complete program in place. So they're providing the Comitech formulary of products that that patient is in the facility for a period of time, ultimately may go to out to home health or go be discharged to home with outpatient wound center, you know, then seeing that wound. I mean, obviously the goal is to heal that wound within the nursing center, but sometimes that's not feasible. So how do we assure that the patients get the Convitec product, not only in the skilled nursing facility, but at home? or through the home health agency. So there's a lot of collaboration with a number of different parties, including the, you know, the clinicians who are prescribing the product to make sure that um, you know, the right products are getting um, following the patients through the continuum of care. And so you know, having this collaboration and partnership with, with everybody involved really helps to promote product compliance and cost effectiveness of the program. And we know too from the CARE Act um, that, you know, facilities are responsible for providing um, family caregivers with education and instruction on the various medical tasks that patients uh, may need uh, when they're discharged home. And so working with partners who are going to help you actualize uh, compliance with the CARE Act is also uh, critical. So the education component, um, within this component, you want to have very simple educational tools um, to ensure that the appropriate care is being uh, provided. Um, we know that in today's environment with staff turnover, you know, we need to make things as easy as possible uh, for uh, nursing staff who have a number of different uh, other responsibilities, not just this wound um, that they're caring for with this patient. And so one of the tools that we've um, engaged in is the use of, of QR, uh, QR codes. So these are a great tool to have quick on-demand access to particularly product education. Uh, there are a number of products that are on the formulary. If a clinician hasn't used a particular product in a while, they can get a quick tutorial on, you know, kind of the mode of action of that product and how to use it. And so we find that the QR codes are very uh, handy to provide as, as part of the education. But then you need more complex education as well. So, um, you know, whether there's an online portal, live virtual sessions, um, and, and also some content around general wound care principles is also important uh, to include uh, in this education portion. And you want to have user-friendly formats because then you kind of have that flexibility in how and when um, the education is provided. You may have home health nurses who are, you know, going from patient to patient and they're grabbing, you know, nuggets of information on the fly. So we need to make it as easy as possible for them, and it really drives their confidence and their empowerment so that they know that um, they will uh, be able to, to take care of this new patient uh, they have these new wound care orders for. And then a, a patient guide, which actually was designed as a patient guide, but really is utilized by clinical staff as well on addressing change. And this can go home with the patient so that they have it there, it's delivered with their product and so they have access to it um, right there along with the products. So when we provide education to staff, it's important to uh, quantify that education and make sure that the education that was provided um, to the clinicians has given them a competency 
uh, in that material. And so um, there is various testing um, that goes on, you know, surveys to test on uh, content and, you know, provision of a certificate uh, when that training is completed uh, by the clinicians. So the wound management component is last here, but certainly isn't least uh, in, in the Comitech Complete program. It's truly where um, the empowerment of the non-specialist nurse in providing wound care uh, begins. Um, we deliver a consistent wound management uh, pathway that helps deliver uh, proven healing outcomes. Um, what we find sometimes in facilities is, you know, you have a lot of trepidation about taking care of complex wound care patients. Uh, I think Jill alluded to it this morning. There's a very short period of time that's devoted in nursing school to wound care. Uh, and so everything um, that, that clinicians learn from wound care, they often learn it on the job. And so providing them with a clinical pathway on appropriate wound care and uh, evidence-based wound care uh, is the way to go to help um, teach them how to provide uh, effective wound care. The International Consensus gu Guideline on uh, Wound Hygiene was published in 2020, and that guideline uh, helps to uh, establish what the framework is for this pathway. It's a very simple four-step process, wound cleansing, uh, wound debridement, uh, managing and refashioning those wound edges, and then dressing the wound. Which dressing are we going to choose um, to uh, secure all of that great work that we've done in the first three steps uh, until the next dressing change? And so what we find is that when we approach clinicians um, with this very simple protocol, it really, um, gives them confidence. Um, well, I can do this. It's, you know, very simple, although it's based on, um, you know, a lot of literature and a lot of research behind it, but certainly um, the practice protocol is uh, really critical to the Comitech Complete Program because we want to make sure that you're not only getting great financial uh, outcomes, but also you're healing wounds. And I think one of the empowerments is when um, nurses see actually um, wounds healing within their facilities where maybe these patients might have gone on to the next level of care uh, without that wound healed. So in bringing it all together, these five steps of Comitech Complete are linked. Um, we go through them separately in review here so we understand them better, but they really are interconnected and dependent on each other. Uh, and the same individuals are engaged in all of these steps uh, within uh, the Convitec Complete program. So if you saw uh, the program this morning, Jill shared some of her results. I think these are demonstrative of, of results that facilities get when they implement these um, uh, Lean Six Sigma principles as part of Convitec Complete. Um, there's, I think one of the things I hear very regularly is this, this integration of the value of the reporting that they're getting um, from their, whether it's a distributor or some other entity who's providing them with product, they would get reports, but nobody looked at them before. They didn't understand the different categories where they were spending. Now there's a focus um, per facility, per product category, per day, because that's that's a factor, um, particularly in skilled nursing. They look at these um, you know reports uh, with that in mind. And then just the um, the 5S strategy and how product is stored and inventoried within their facilities, both in the units as well as in the um, central supply management. So a very um, Lean Six Sigma methodology there. And we find that a lot of the materials management folks are very steeped in a Lean Six Sigma approach. And so they understand it and they appreciate um, the application of those principles to wound management. Uh, skew reduction, right? How many different products do you have on your shelf and do you really need them all? And so um, in the Bethesda facilities, they were able to slim down um, their number of different products um, to make it just a much more simple and effective uh, uh, wound portfolio. Understanding when reorders need to happen. 
So um, restocking uh, instead of, you know, just being more ad hoc with, you know, oh, well, you know, let's just keep reordering product. And sometimes what happens is you, you may have a supplier who is just delivering on a monthly basis for a particular patient. And, you know, without an analysis of that, you, you know, you probably uh, have a whole lot of product um, that isn't going to get used um, in a timely way. Um, so integrating, you know, the billing capabilities, uh, we talked about managed care. Um, this is a huge impact. I don't know uh, necessarily if the acute care facilities feel it, but definitely in the in the post-acute environment um, where, you know, they have to do prior authorization and there are a lot of different hoops to, to run through, um, making sure that they're able to capture uh, all of the revenue that they have coming to them from these managed care payers. And so it's important. Uh, one of the things we've learned through Comitech Complete, it's it's important to go to those managed care payers directly, and help them understand what we're trying to accomplish with this wound care uh, process. Because um, you know the products may be more expensive than they're used to. So helping them understand that um, they'll use um, less product over time, and they will actually heal wounds uh, perhaps more uh, quickly is is something that they uh, really look to hear about. And then one of the things Jill alluded to as well is, is this kind of, you know, uh, extension of these principles to other areas uh, within storage, you know, things like uh, ostomy care, which is another kind of area where there are a lot of different products and having an organizational process to be able uh, to uh, store them appropriately, IV therapy, respiratory therapy, all those areas. Uh, our uh, spillover to the um, Lean Six Sigma processes, and they fit in very well with them. Um, this one too, this slide um, Jill shared this morning, I just, I think again, with the cost savings, that's one key of Comitech Complete, certainly because uh, as healthcare providers, we're all looking um, to provide, um, you know, effective care less expensively. And so looking at uh, the wound care purchases, it's not that the patients changed for the facilities. They were still getting the same uh, number of wound care patients. Some of them even, some of the facilities after the program were getting more wound care patients because they had um, developed a skill in caring for those patients. And seeing those, um, those purchasing numbers come down um, and their um, clinical outcomes improved was something that was really eye-opening for them. And, and here you saw the clinical cases this morning, but also uh, we, we talk a lot about patient-centered care, but we need to look at patient satisfaction. Um, patients who have long-term wounds um, tend to be um, just really not uh, in a, having a good quality of life Sometimes if the wounds uh, exudate isn't managed well, um, they don't wanna leave the home. So when they see that um, there's a the structured wound care program, these are the products that are included and they actually start to see progress in their wound and perhaps less pain and more comfort, um, decrease dressing changes because one of the things, you know, that one of the times that can be painful for patients with wounds is when that dressing has changed. So if we can leave a dressing in place longer, um, that's always gonna provide um, more patient satisfaction. And the, the staff uh, as well, when they learn how to do wound hygiene well, uh, they are able to um, you know, be more efficient in how they're providing their dressing changes. And when they're using advanced products that have a longer wear time, they can also benefit from less dressing changes. They have more time to do the other tasks that they need to do for their patients. In some of these settings, um, Medicare Part B is a factor. So we need to make sure that they are aligning the formulary to those um, to that payer as well uh, to get consistency, not only when they're in a facility or in a Part A, um, environment where that they can get the same types of, of um, products after that. That's also can be a challenge because it, it's a, um, a collaboration with the supplier um, to work with you, uh, the manufacturer, as well as the customer to make sure that they get those products when the patient leaves the facility. 
And then important to provide for the uh, the discharge of those patients and making sure that um, there are tools to help those patients transition out of the facility and to the home. And then really looking to um, provide wound hygiene in a very um, evidence-based way, competently doing it, and you know ultimately perhaps um, you know getting some type of uh, certification in um, providing the wound hygiene protocol. So with that, I will turn it back to Sue. Thank you, Julia, for that practical session. We do have some questions that have come in for you. Let's start with this first one. With all the priorities that we have in our facility, how can we get the attention of our clinical leaders to implement a program like Combatech Complete? Well, I think with all the everything that's going on in the facilities today, one of the big factors is financial. Um, I read about it every day, um, the financial pressures that um, uh, providers across the continuum of care are under. And so when uh, providers are spending a significant amount of money on wound care, um, I think that gets the attention. But particularly in the post-acute environment, um, wounds are a big uh, regulatory survey issue. Um, and, and it's a focus for surveyors coming in to take a look at the, whether it's the home health agencies or the facilities um, wound care program, you know, down to basically observing a clinician do a wound care change. Um, so that, and then there's the, the third one, um, which is litigation. Um, Wounds and pressure ulcers in particular are a high uh, area uh, of litigation and and base, you know patient dissatisfaction. So those are some key areas that have I, I think probably a financial component to them all. Uh, and so in, in looking at um, providing uh, care more cost effectively, I think that's where I would start in having some of those conversations. Excellent. Um, there's another one. I'm a single wound care specialist covering the entire facility, which I'm sure many can relate to. Um, I only get the most complex of wound patients. So how does this program empower the other clinicians to provide that standard wound care, um, albeit we want advanced, right? Yeah. Well, the standard of care and wound care. So I, I think this, to your point, um, this is the situation in many places. You have kind of one singular person, maybe two, uh, to cover a number of patients. And so the specialists are only going to get to the most complex patients. So the one of the great things about Convitec Complete, particularly in the education and the wound management uh, components is that um, there's very easy to access education, you know, simply put, so that um, you have the non specialists who can access it on demand as they need to. And with regard to the wound management, the, the clinical pathway that's, um, you know, based on the wound hygiene protocol is a very simple protocol uh, of care. And it, you know, it is based on, um, you know, very basic principles, but um, effective. And one of the things, um, you know, when we talk about wound cleansing, that's step one in the wound hygiene protocol. What, what I have found as a clinician over the years is that, it, you know, I have clinicians who say to me, well, we don't have an order to cleanse the wound. <laughs> And so, I mean, that's, you know, that's huge. So as you talk with um, the clinicians about these kinds of things, you know, tell me about your wound care program. Is there, do you have a standard protocol? Many don't. Many rely on the specialist um, to kind of develop that. And there are policies and procedures probably somewhere um, on, you know, wound care. But um, wound hygiene, I think, is a key uh, for those, the non-specialists, because it's easy uh, and they can replicate it. Um, and, you know, when you have uh, advanced wound care products in that step four, which is dress, um, you know, you are, are doing those first three steps, cleansing, debriding, refashioning, all that work is done. And now you're going to protect it with the appropriate dressing, manage the exudate, manage biofilm within the dressing. Um, all those things, um, you know, come together. And I think it's it's very um, empowering to the staff nurses to to realize, well, I can take care of these complex wounds. Great points. Thank you. 
Speaking of partnering with some other folks um, that are outside though, there is another question on home health. So home health can be, I think everyone can agree, sometimes challenging on ordering some of these specialty dressings. Um, and so with that, are there any recommendations or suggestions or things that have, you know, Combatec, um has seen that might be able to help with that? Yeah, so you're right, um, that can be challenging. It's really challenging to deal with anyone outside of the facility to get that continuum of care, uh, particularly with products done. But it, it's a matter of working collaboratively with um, supplier partners, with distributor partners who are engaged in what um, the, the facility is trying to do. So school nursing facility is trying to take the best care of their patients while they're there, but they also want to work with partners uh, that are going to continue the work that they've done because they don't want to get hit with readmissions because these wounds deteriorate once they leave. That's an important factor. And it's really, uh, it, you know, it takes a lot of communication, takes a lot of collaboration, not only from um, the facilities themselves or the entities, whether it's the home health agency or the or the skilled nursing or whoever, but who, with the with the partner who is providing those dressings uh, and really being empowered to have those conversations with them to say, you know, look, we want our patients to continue with this, you know, wound care protocol. And, you know, these are the dressings that we need. Um, and, you know, I think when you talk to you know partners who are engaged in um, taking care of the patient um, more you know so than perhaps a financial incentive, you find those partners they are out there, and it's just a matter of the you know the facilities finding them and you know working with us to help um, to you know collaborate and to have the conversations to for the manufacturer to provide the product education. Um, you know, perhaps this is uh, a dressing that's more expensive, but it's a um, it's um, manufactured to be in place for up to a week. It can manage exudate, you know, up to a week, you, you know, uh, based on clinical judgment. So these are, um, you know, perhaps more expensive dressings and sometimes um, partners will shy away from that. But when you can tell the story about why that's not a bad thing, uh, I think, um, you know, they can uh, get there. It's not an easy road. Um, but through the Convitec Complete Program, uh, we, we work as a manufacturer with uh, all of the entities to have those discussions and to, uh, to work on getting dressings uh, in home health as well. Excellent. And in line with that dressing um, conversation, there is a question around if there are products available from Combatec that meet the needs for large surface pressure injuries. Well, um, the short answer is yes, right? So, um, you know, not understanding everything that's going on with that particular wound. Um, you know, Comitech's uh, advanced wound care portfolio has um, exudate management um, types of products, both uh, with an antimicrobial and without. Um, and the great thing about the Comitech products is that they're they're made to go together, right? So we, many of you probably are very familiar with Aquacell, a hydrofiber product um, as, you know, a primary dressing. You can cover that with an Aquacell foam or now a new Comba foam. They have hydrofiber therapy technology in them so that, you know, everything that you're absorbing up through an Aquacell continues up into an Aquacell layer in the foam dressing. Um, and then we also have Kava Max, which is a super absorbent. So if you have those kind of large area, largely exuding, um, we can use a Kava Max with that over top of the hydrofiber. And then certainly um, the Aquacil AG Advantage, um, many of these wounds uh, are impacted by bio burden. And so having the Aquacil AG Advantage, which has not only silver, but kind of a more than silver technology incorporates a metal chelating agent as uh, as well as a surfactant to uh, to help manage biofilm within the dressing. So it's a pretty broad portfolio, uh, depending on the wound condition. You know, there are different kind of ways to use the dressings, and our uh, our folks, our clinicians, uh, Convitec clinicians, and our um, territory managers can help. Um, in, in having some of those discussions about the particular types of wounds that you're seeing 
and what the most appropriate products might be. Excellent. And one last question here, how can we continue to get the benefits of Convitec Complete over time? Yeah, it's a commitment, right? Um, you know, we know that um, everybody's excited at the beginning of the project and, you know, they really, they, they want it to succeed. And so, you know, you will have success with it, but it really is leadership, right? So it's the individuals who are responsible for uh, the outcomes for, you know, whether they're um, clinical or financial um, to continue to drive um, the processes that got you there. Um, it's, you know, it's a commitment and it's every day. So it's not something, okay, we put this program in place, you know, now we can just kind of walk away and, you know, look to some other clinical area. Uh, it does involve a uh, continual process uh, analysis. Uh, and then when something goes off the rails, which it will, um, because, you know, we're all human, um, to, to kind of pull it back and get it back in line so that you're able to continue uh, to have the success with the program. Great, thank you. So again, thank you, Julia, for such a wonderful presentation on optimizing wound care processes to improve clinical and financial outcomes. And we wanna thank all of you for your participation in this session and these wonderful engaging questions. We hope that you really enjoyed the rest of the conference and encourage you to stop by and visit our virtual Combatech Advanced Wound Care booth to learn more about our products and how they can help to improve the lives that you touch.